Welcome. By request, we're going back to basics with massing. We're going to cover off how we create a mass for the purpose of hosting an adaptive component fence family. Now, to place this adaptive component that we have over here in the project browser called fence post and panel, we first need our mass object. Let's go up to the massing and site tab and start an in place mass. We're going to give this mass a name. This is for fences, so let's just simply call it fence. Now to model this mass component in, I'm going to do this in a plan view. Up on the draw panel, using my rectangular drawing tool and ensuring that the 3D snapping is toggled off, I'm simply going to draw some sketch lines in that represent the boundary of our site. I'm going to go back to the 3D view. You can see there the sketch lines are currently on the underside of the topography and that's a good start because what we're going to do is select the sketch lines that we put in and create a form from it. We need to ensure that this mass form has its top surface higher than the topography. It already is, so we're going to leave this as is and move on to placing in where we want our line to be drawn, where our fence will be placed. I'd like to have a fence line that runs along the topography over on this nearest surface. Using the reference line spline through points tool, and I'm also going to make sure that the follow surface option on the options bar is toggled on. This ensures a better connection to the fence component when it's placed. The first part of my reference line is going to be down here at this corner point. Just do your best to get it as close as you can. I'm just going to zoom out because you can see I can choose which side or which surface I'd like to draw my line on. I'm going to start clicking to place these points for the spline. Okay. You can do this roughly to start with or you can come back at a later point and modify these if you need to make it more accurate. Okay, coming over and finishing off with the last point. I don't need to place any more points, so I can simply hit escape a couple of times just to finish off that spline. Now this spline on its own doesn't really do much for us. We need to convert it into a divided path. With the spline selected, using divide path up on the ribbon, we can now add additional points over the top of that spline. You'll notice here the spline points, the divided points, are shown by the smaller circles rather than the points that were on the original spline. I want these points to be closer together. The distance between these points defines the posts on the fence. In this case, I'm going to change the layout for the divided path to be a maximum distance of 2,000 millimeters. You'll notice here that I now have closer spacing on my divided points. Now we can go ahead and place our component. My component is already over here in my project browser. I'm simply going to select it, drag it over onto my model space, putting my cursor over the first point, noting that down on the status bar, it's noting it as the point that's on the divided path. That's what we're looking for. I'm going to click to place it and then clicking on the second point to finish the placement of that component. Now you could continue clicking on these points to place the rest of them, but in this case here, we can simply use a nice little shortcut by selecting the component first and then up on the modify panel using the repeat tool. This will repeat this single component across all points along the divided path. Just to finish this off, over here on the back side, I'm going to do this one more time using the reference, spline through points, make sure follow surface on the options bar is on, 
I can snap to the last point of the previous line as a starting point, simply saying that I've got two points over the top of each other and that is fine. Then clicking to place where I want some of these spline points to exist. Finishing it off, hitting escape a couple of times to cancel the creation of that spline, selecting it again. We're going to divide the path, change the layout to a maximum distance of the same value of 2000 millimeters I had before, and I'm going to place the fence component again. This time when I place it, I need to be very specific that I'm picking up the first point of the second spline. So in this case, the default location is going to be the end point of the first spline, but if I use my tab key, I can now tab to the first point of the second spline, selecting it, selecting the second point, and once again, just doing exactly what we did before, and that is with selecting the component and repeating it. You can continue around your site until you've got all your fence components in place. I'm happy with what I've got here at the moment. The last things I need to do is to simply finish my mass. And the mass is still visible, so in the visibility graphic overrides, simply finding the mass category and turning it off. Now in this case, the mass is still visible, and that is because there's one final thing I need to switch off, and that is up on the Massing and Site tab, there is a temporary override which says to show the mass irrespective of what the category for mass is set to, which we just turned off. So in order to use the view settings which the mass is off, we simply select Show Mass by View Settings. And that's it. We can continue working up our site with our newly defined and place fence component.